Welcome into the Roaring Repeater Podcast here on 7220sports.com. I'm your host, Cody Tucker, joined in studio by Jared Newland. Uh, if the 0-2 start wasn't depressing enough, Jared, and uh, the fact that BYU is coming to town and this game was circled on the calendar and everybody was really excited for it about two weeks and a day ago, um, <laughs> Four teams leaving the Mountain West Conference, joining the new look Pac-12, Fresno State, San Diego State, Boise State, Sayonara, I say. But Colorado State is also one of those schools, Wyoming's border war rival, that will be leaving for the Pac-12. The bombshell dropped Thursday. It's Friday. Um, We've had 24 hours, more than 24 hours to think about this, mull over this. What were your initial thoughts? Well, mm Initially, it made my trip to Casper and trip home from Casper very quick because I was on the phone the entire time with people. So <laughs> didn't even know that I was on the road, to be honest with you. Um, not shocked, but at the same time, the timing of it. And you know that they planned this out. They've, they've known for a while that they were ready to roll, but you have Washington State hosting Washington, well, in Seattle, You have Oregon State hosting Oregon. You have CSU hosting CU. Uh, Texas State hosted Arizona State last night. All that kind of stuff. So I think the timing of it was planned that they could make a splash with this media-wise. All these games going on and announce it. Does it do them any good? I don't know. Not Uh, if they all get slapped <laughs> true which um, I'm, I'm fully pulling for i don't yeah mind yeah you. let's go big big boys in this weekend <laughs> usually we're rooting for the underdogs but uh um but you know yes it sucks don't get me wrong and i'm pissed in the back of my mind but i truly believe they're still going to play the border war yeah uh, it just makes too much sense for both for i mean csu doesn't care about wyoming's budget and Wyoming doesn't care about CSU's budget at this point, but it makes sense because they both need the game yeah. to fill their arenas and stadiums. Yeah. And actually, it's just it's just one more added hatred towards a rivalry. Oh, boy, is it. And Wyoming hosts CSU in their so-called last year in the Mountain West in 2025. Um, and it's kind of like adding fuel to the fire to the BYU game um, tomorrow yeah. because – People are pissed, <laughs> and and I get it. But at the same time, a lot of the a lot of the so called facts that are floating around out there, they're not facts. They're just hearsay. And people saying, "Well, I have a source that said this. I have a source." None of it makes sense. Yeah. I mean, think about what you're saying before you post something. Uh-huh. And oh, if the O two, if folks weren't O and two, this would have never happened, <laughs> guys. This shit was going down for the last six months. Yep. Yeah. Oh, especially when talks broke off between the two on a scheduling agreement, what, two and a half, three weeks ago? Yeah, September 1 was oh, yeah. really the deadline. Yeah. And as soon as they knew that that wasn't going to happen, of course they were breaking off. I'm sure and, they told the Mountain West yeah. that day their intentions. And I'm sure uh, Nevarez and everybody at the offices has been trying to scramble and figure out what the next move is. And from everything we've heard, listening to the national media and the people who are really in the know that actually have sources – that are leaking this stuff to them. Yeah. Um, you know, that the six are in the pack six, as we can call it right now. They're looking for at least two more, probably four, but they're not going to go over 10 because they don't want to cut that pie into too many pieces because yeah. they don't know what the future beholds for their television revenue. And they don't want it to be like a 12 or a 16 team league where they're only getting 10 million a piece. Yeah. That's not, I mean, right now, the Mountain West, besides Boise, is getting six million. Yeah. I mean, it's not that much more. So, and and Oregon State and Washington State wants to have as much of that as possible, and because they're spending over a hundred million out of their coffers to get these four teams right now, and they're going to have to spend more money if they were to get a Memphis, a North Texas, a Texas State, or a UTSA, or a Tulane. They're probably only going to take two of those teams. No. Yeah. And then there's probably still a possibility of taking two more Mountain West teams, which as you and I probably know it, would be Air Force and UNLV. Yeah. They don't want anybody else. Yeah. And what sucks are the two founding members of this league, back in the whack to the Mountain West, still sitting in the Mountain West and probably will not be a Mountain West anymore. And yeah. that's New Mexico and Wyoming. 
Yeah. Um, I know, you know, the victory lap yesterday from those four schools was so disheartening, and it was really gross, and it was really hard to watch. And um, I know, you know, Wyoming fans were really disgusted with it. It was, it was tough. It really was. It was tough to see that. But, um, you know, then you start thinking logically, Jared, and you're like, like you said, there's a risk. There's, there's logic a, behind this? Yeah, there's a risk involved here. And say they add Tulane and Memphis, um, good league, sure. Uh, what are they going to draw TV-wise? I mean, is this going to be massively more than what it would have been if Oregon State and Wazoo just joined the Mountain West Conference? I don't see how. Uh, there's a valuation that's put to this stuff, and um, that's why I really would like to hear from Tom Berman, and we, we're hoping we're going to here pretty soon. Yep. But he's been on TV uh, committees, and he knows how this stuff is valued. So... And who knows what the future beholds for stuff like this, but he could at least talk to it on what a scenario of Conference X would be with these teams, Conference Y with these teams. He could at least kind of do some roundabout figures. And we listened to a podcast with Ross Dellinger, uh, Dan, no, it was Dan Wetzel, right? And um, Pat Forty yep. today. Um, and if you guys haven't listened to it, I don't like promoting other people, but this is a really good one. And they talk about the demise, you know, of what's happening that we are talking about. And they, they feel bad for Wyoming and New Mexico. They yeah. really do. Um, I thought it was a great point that they said Wyoming has done every single thing right, but the one thing that's out of, out of its control is its media market. That there's more antelope in the state than people, and that's the truth. But you and I have talked about it, and, and I kind of want we, – we talked about this idea a little bit, maybe pitching Wyoming to a conference. Um, one of those things that I feel is not pitched, and you would know more about this than I do, but there are a lot of alumni that live on the front range. The And, and it, we talked about it on the phone last night, Jared. The thing that's so irritating about this whole thing is we know the truth. We know that CSU people, for the main, for the most part, are not invested in that program. It's a beautiful day out. What a day to go ride my mountain bike! Oh, CSU's playing today. Wyoming fans don't don't act like that. They don't do that, and they mention that so much on the podcast that Wyoming fans are are loyal as hell. Invested, invested. Uh, CSU is not. Their fans are not invested. They're playing in a forty five thousand seat stadium tomorrow on campus. Because Colorado and Colorado State can't fill up Mile High Stadium. I have a friend that went to CSU, and yes, I have one friend that went to CSU. He flat out said, he goes, they don't even care in Fort Collins, let alone no. Denver or the entire front range. No. About and yeah, they're The gonna, Denver Post doesn't even have a CSU writer. Yeah. It, it's just... So it's we know the truth, and that's what's irritating. But yes, they have, they have the Denver market in their backyard, and that's what TV value, valuations is... By. Does Wyoming not, though? But Wyoming isn't – I mean, part of Wyoming's considered in the DMA for Denver. Part of Wyoming's considered in the Scotts Bluff DMA. Part of it's in the Salt Lake. Part of it's in the Rapid City. Part of it's in Billings. It's crazy. It's yep. just where Wyoming is because the more populated areas, other than Casper, um, is on these borders. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it, it sucks. Do you but think that's how it's done? Do you think there could be you could at least put that in their brains, like a Tom Berman that could go, dude? Oh, they know. I, I mean, mean, what the, did you say? There's fifteen thousand alums that live in. It's in fifteen-ish co- in the front range. On the front range, yeah. which also includes their families, yep. who grew up Wyoming Cowboys fans. That's a that's a lot of people. But not I, comparatively to CSU, but we know about the care level. That's and, and I love the passion that's coming out of you right now. <laughs> but at the same time, I have the feeling about some of the Wyoming alums in Colorado as you're talking about CSU. Really? They just don't come up to games. I mean, they, they'll have d- events in Denver. They don't go. And I get it. They don't want to fight traffic. Yeah. They don't want to uh, go through um, you know a three-hour trip for a 45-minute presentation. I get it. Um, and it, it's hard to get some of those people to come up to games. And, it's, and I'm going to call them fair weather because – they have a right to be. No. I mean, if they were winning and had a reason to come tomorrow night, they're, I mean, yeah, it's probably going to be sold out if it hasn't already by we're talking. I know that a ticker going. No. There's not going to be, not every seat's going to be full tomorrow night. It's yeah. going to be like very similar to the game last week where there's going to be a lot of empty seats because people just haven't gotten rid of their tickets and they're not going to come. No. Yeah. 
What about uh, something else we talked about, and we certainly are not getting political at all on this show or ever. Um, in fact, I hate political stuff and don't even put it on the Twitter. I'm sick of it. <laughs> um, Wyoming is in an advantageous position, right, to have a one university, one four-year university that the state government has more than backed. Um, and a lot of states can't say that kind of stuff. Uh, and I think that's very advantageous. But how much more can they do? Uh, that's There's a lot of other pressing issues in this state. Yeah. Um, roads, schools, all those kind of things, um, especially when energy is down, um, Wyoming suffers. Yeah. When energy, when energy is up, we're booming. Yeah. And the new stuff going into Rock Springs, the new possible – possibility of the new trona mine is going to be great for the economy the uh the nuclear power plant in camera is going to be great for the economy but not all of that's going to say oh my gosh now wyoming can be in the pac-12 situation it just doesn't happen overnight like that yeah. it I and mean, we're talking 10 to 15 years down the road type stuff well i know there's a thought that you know i'm uh, my trigger is three letters jared and that's fcs that is a huge trigger for me I thought you were going to say five letters F U B Y U. Oh, that you know, too. Okay. That too. But the FCS thing drives me up the wall. And what you're saying right here is the one thing, in my opinion, that could drive the University of Wyoming to those kind of lengths is state government not doing well and the economy not doing well. And but Wyoming is invested, like we heard on that podcast. They've invested so much in facilities and coaches and and everything. The only thing that they're really behind on in a lot of ways is NIL. And I, that will come at some point, yeah. I, but I, like Berman has said, they need 800,000 to really make this NIL stuff work. Yeah. How that hasn't happened yet, I don't know. Um, Mitch, Jason, you could probably answer that question a heck of a lot better. Well, than, if anything, the 0-2 weekend. start doesn't help that. No, uh, but I've, I was with a gentleman at the Hall of Fame and he flat out said, and um, he's a very large uh, donor to the university. He flat out said that he has made sure that none of his money will go to NIL. He does not believe in the kids getting paid. And I get it. I get it too. I totally get it. And um, it, and thankful for him. He's done a lot and he does stuff for scholarships. He does stuff for just flat out donors, you know, that kind of stuff. And enhancements to the facilities that he's not going to give to the kids themselves. And that's fine. I get it. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you. I haven't yet. Yeah. I can't wrap my head around um, giving them cash right now. And, and I, yeah, I think it's cool that they get paid and I think I'm all for it, but I just haven't done it personally yet. Yeah. And you're not alone. Um, I guess, you know, there's some, we know a little bit uh, through sources inside the program. We know a little bit. Um, but let's be real. Tom, what does Tom Berman really know right now? I mean, it's such a fluid situation. Uh, you know, they weren't exactly, um, you know, blindsided yesterday. But, you know, I think they knew it was coming. But like you, I don't think they expected it right now. Um, so, gosh, I would. Uh, <laughs> they had to have had so many talks going on behind the scenes. And then when. Maybe a CSU president, yes, a Wyoming native. Same with Boise State. And their ADs, they're cutting off um, maybe some communication and not participating in a group chat. Yeah. Then you really under – and now, did that happen? I have no idea. I'm speculating. But most likely they're – or they're just saying mum's a word. Yeah. You know, they're not, they're not commenting like they once were all of a sudden. Yeah. So – well, I can tell you what what I've heard so far, and uh, I see that people online are talking about mergers and all that kind of stuff. Um, that is not what I'm hearing from the inside at all. Um, what I'm hearing is that the Pac-12 is very much interested in the teams you mentioned, North Texas, Texas State, Tulane, Memphis. If they don't get them, however – then you're talking Mountain West, and like you said, you're probably talking UNLV. You're probably talking Air Force. I've also heard Air Force is the ultimate wild card in this entire thing, whether the Mountain West survives. Well, the Mountain West has eight teams still. That's an FBS conference. They don't even need to make a move. They don't even need to go out and get anybody, theoretically, if they stand pat the way they are. Do they have to have eight for basketball? I'm not – what is the 
automatic. You know, select. I'm not sure. And, and that brings up another point that people think basketball has anything to do with this. Yeah. It just, Fresno State wouldn't be in the Pac 12 right now if yeah. basketball it's had It's like 1% to do of with it. This. Yes. So, <clears throat> you know, if the Mountain West stands pat, uh, which, you know, we've heard the rumblings from Colorado Springs for a long time. Do they go join the American with Army and Navy? Uh, do they go independent? What do they do? There's no way the other teams in the American would allow that to have three service academies because you have to prepare three times for the, that type of an offense. Well, and are we that used to Air Force where we where we're like you know? I feel like I think they're they think they're better than Army and Navy that maybe they don't want to be in a conference with them. Well, lately, yeah, not lately, but. Uh, you know what I mean? You know what I'm trying to say? Like, I don't know if they even want to be in a conference. There's arrogance down at the academy. <laughs> but I'm also hearing that if Air Force doesn't want to pay $17 million to get out of a – they don't want anything to do with that. And do they stick – they don't care about the CSU rivalry. They don't care about losing CSU. Uh, for them, it's all about Army and Navy no matter what. Um, they're going to play them no matter what. But if Air Force moves, then you're then you're in some trouble. Well th- – so as it stands right now, you need nine votes to dissolve the league. Yep. Now there's four teams less, and what's Hawaii's vote? Is It can't be a full vote, can it? I, I don't understand where that is either because they're only a member in one, one sport. So does it come down to now that you take four out of the equation, do you, does that vote go down to a five or a four? Yeah. So I or do you add somebody immediately and <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but I don't know. Well, I will tell you, folks. We're gonna have to lag, we're gonna have to drag this on a little bit because I was just told that I'm going to be receiving a transcript to talk about here on the podcast from a uh, some happenings today in Laramie <laughs> and where we're kind of at. But you know, like we said, Jared, Tom Berman can't talk about a lot of stuff and. He can't – he probably doesn't even know a lot of stuff. Um, I think he's going to say the right things, like the border war, we want to keep the border war too. We're going to do what's best for Wyoming. And I, think I did see a quote from CSU's saying the same. folks saying the same thing. Yeah, I think he wants to – I would think anyway. Um, I'm waiting for this to show up in my email. I'm hitting refresh every five seconds here. But uh, I would say he wants he, – he's going to say something to the effect of the Mountain West is united. Uh, we've heard that before, unfortunately. But I think he's going to say that the eight remaining members are united and they are looking forward to going forward with their league. Um, well, I don't know what else he can say, though. I mean – Fill some space here until this comes in. <laughs> well, please do. Um, you know, we talk about uh, backing and um, financial assistance, stuff like that. Very interesting numbers came out, um, and you can anybody can Google these um, from for endowment sizes of universities. This is this plays a factor too. Uh, let's let's just take Stanford for an example. They are way up there in the top five. I'm guessing thirty six point five billion dollar endowment at Stanford University. TCU they were in the league. Let's talk about them. Two point six billion. Uh, some other comparables. New Mexico, 577 million. Um, that that was from fiscal year 21. The other ones are I've all found are from 23. Uh, Boise State. There's a range. There's not an exact, but there's a range in here. 145 to 234 million. It's pretty low for a school that size. No. Oh. And yes, it is a truck driving school. We know that. <laughs> and they would never. I mean, Stanford is not going to put, be in the same league as a Boise State. You brought it up. I heard it from somebody else, and this came from there is no effing way Stanford <laughs> would ever be in the same league as Boise State, and it's all based on academics. has nothing to do with athletics. Um, and um, so CSU, $580 million. Montana State, censors talk about you know that part of it. Two hundred and sixty-four million. Guess what Wyoming's is? Seven hundred and eighty-nine and a half million dollar endowment. That is more than Boise State and CSU combined. You think that's invested? That is very much invested, and it's 
it's invested in the entire university. It's not just about athletics. We know that. But Northern Colorado is right around the same number as Boise State. And I just read off that Montana State is over what Boise State has for an endowment. So if they think this has anything to do with student welfare, student athlete welfare, the best thing for the student athletes, this is all about what's best for the money and the mark. Yeah. And athletics. Yeah. So there's that. And Cody just got a ding with an email here. Yep. So here we go. So Tom Berman is going to be releasing a, uh, a statement here. Um, you know, once again, we'll let you know right away, he can't say much and he probably doesn't know much. Uh, he was asked, you know, Ryan Thorburn, of course, who now works for the University of Wyoming, uh, asked him a few questions here. Obvi- and one of them is obviously the state of Wyoming can, can't do much about the market size, but with the brand One Wyoming, it's all, the only university in the entire state, which we've talked about. All the alumni on the front range, which factor into the Denver market, the college television viewing, the facilities, you know, yada, 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 and the support that you're mentioning with the endowment, for instance. Uh, Tom Berman said, I do believe we are relevant. We will stay relevant as an FBS conference and member. Uh, Talking about the Mountain West. Uh, We have no desire to look at going down. So all you FCS creeps, uh, enough, had it. I'm glad he said that. That's nice. You go down if you want to. (laughs) Yeah, you go down. Yeah, you go down to Greeley and tell me how that goes. Uh, no desire at looking and going down. The state of Wyoming is not in a place that goes down. We fight, we grind away to stay relevant, and I think we will. What we can bring to the table is one of the most engaged fan bases in the West. We can bring to the table good facilities and improving facilities and a great, not good, a great Saturday game day atmosphere, especially compared to many of the schools that we are going to be compared to. So we're proud of who we are. We wear it with pride, and we're striving and will continue to strive to be as relevant as possible. Uh, there's a lot of truth PR in that, but there's a lot of effing truth in that. And we've talked about it so far. The a first lot of that's coming from the heart. Yeah, no doubt. Um, he talks about realignment driven by football. No doubt about it. The amount of media dollars you can get from football and now the access to the college football playoff. Obviously there's still going to be four power conferences right now. That's another thing. There's zero guarantee that this pack, whatever, uh, is going to be that. There's no way it's going to yeah. go up. And even in this podcast that we listened to earlier, there's a piece in there that said, maybe it's the middle. There's a group of four. Yeah. There's the one, and then there's the rest. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Uh, you're going to have to win games at the end of the day. It's going to take a great team probably to knock that door down and get in. We can do it under the league that will be available to us in 2026. We have eight members, which is the number we need, but I think it would be wise, and I know the conference agrees with this, we need to look at expansion quickly, and we need to be aggressive with the expansion model. We have a lot of money coming our way. We've got to look at it and say, hey, how can we be as competitive as possible? Um, Thorburn asks, how important is it for the remaining eight Mountain West programs to stick together and, as you said, get aggressive with adding some teams? Berman said, very. If these eight can stay together and we can add some teams, we can really be a good league. There's some exposure, obviously. The Pac-12 has six members today, so they need to add two more. you got to have eight per the NCAA So they're going to add two more, and it appears they're looking to the southeast part of the country, and an additional two or possibly four. If they fail, it's likely they're going to circle back to the Mountain West, and we could lose an additional member or two. So that's why expansion is very, very important. We have talked about all of these things. Uh, I have not heard a word merger in here one time. So um, not that he would spill the beans if there was a merger, but there's not. Uh, They are looking forward to the Mountain West and keeping this thing together. And that's that's great to hear. And I mean, let's speculate yeah. because that's what everybody does. Yeah. Why not? Let's ta- have a hot take or two. Uh, New Mexico State possibility. Yeah. UTEP absolutely possibility. Natural rivals right there, and with New Mexico. UTSA if they don't go somewhere else possibility. Texas State great atmosphere last night, but I was I did hear they were still selling tickets like late yesterday afternoon. Yeah, heard that too. Yeah. Which, that's disappointing to hear. Yep. You have a Big 12 team come to your place, you better sell that that's thing out way school, in man. advance. That's a fun party school, That's a problem, though. They have those. Probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then, of course, North Texas is another possibility. Yeah. And then Tarleton State. Well, and that's what I was going to say. Let's talk about these FCS thing because a lot of people are like, what about Montana? Like, Montana's a neighbor, but you know how far Montana is? Uh, it's not they, – they have the problem Wyoming has. They have all that pride and all that good stuff. They don't have a market at all, not to mention all the Title IX stuff. Some of these schools would have to add teams, uh, add a ton of scholarships. 
Yep. And maybe they just flat, they've made it seem like they just don't flat want to come to the FES. They're pretty happy yeah. down there competing for national titles. I believe their stadium's around 23,000. Yeah. That'd be doable. Sure. Montana State, I think's around 20, 21. It's doable. Yeah. But when you're talking about North Dakota State, I want to say it's maybe 20,000 seat dome. No, I don't know. Uh, sure, South not. Dakota is even like in the mid teens. I mean, it's brand new. It's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it's all redone, yeah. but they would have to enhance theirs as well. Yeah. Northern Colorado sits like 4,000. It's bad. And it's a, it looks like a high school field. And that's your new rival, folks, for yeah. those of you who want to go to the FCS. Yeah. Uh, go to Greeley and sit in their stadium yeah. that's worse than East High School. Go to Colorado Mesa. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, that, that's another level down even. I mean, it's, it's, well, what are you guys thinking? I know, it's crazy. Yeah, Wyoming would have the best facilities of them all, but it doesn't relate to how the athletes they could get then if they're in a different division. These facilities better last 100 years yeah. because there's not going to be any more money poured into them. But, I mean, it's time to step up Cheyenne. It's time to step up Laramie. It's time yeah. to step up Casper yeah. for the people who aren't participating to participate. No doubt. Because I hear it time and time again sitting here in this town of Cheyenne, city of Cheyenne, I just don't go to Laramie, you know? And it's like, when's the last time you Oh, I haven't been over there for like 10 years. Yeah. It's 45 miles away. I you know. guys act like it's on the other side of the Utah border. I know. I mean, it's crazy. so that would be Nevada. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, seriously, yep. that's what people act like. But, oh, they'll go to Denver. They'll go to Fort Collins and spend money, but they won't go to Laramie? Yeah. Come it's, on. It's maddening as hell. Uh, Berman also says, uh, Thorburn, of course, uh, really nice interview here for Thorburn. Obviously he works for the university of Wyoming. Now this isn't going to be a grilling by any means. And, and we know that. And we Get also some balls, Ryan, <laughs> uh, he did ask about the bronze boot, uh, the rivalry, the, the border war, the whole nine with Colorado state. Berman said, I believe the border war will continue. I've talked to John Weber, the AD at Colorado State. I believe that's what he thinks. It's in all of our best interest that we play CSU in multiple sports every year. It's 66 miles away. College athletics has lost its balance, and we're traveling sports teams all over the country to compete. This is one that just makes sense, and I would say let's just not screw it up. That's a warning to CSU. Let's just not screw this up, and you said all of that. It makes too much sense in every single sport. Heard today that Sundance Wicks was even talking to Nico Medved. That game has to happen, and I wonder if maybe for both teams if they could play twice. I wonder if basketball you could play a home and away every year. Some some do that. New Mexico, New Mexico State, they were can... until people pulling out guns and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> because they just can't schedule anymore. Yeah, yep. I, I mean, I think Tom, the thing I love about Tom, and you know him better than I do, uh, Jared, but he uh, he he talks, he, his heart's on his sleeve. He probably gets himself in trouble because he's so honest, and I, and I love that about him. I think he's a very forthright guy, and he's saying everything he can. And it helps that he's an alum. Yeah. He's worked there for a very long time in different yeah. roles. He has a lot invested. His, you know, he, his kids were born there. His dad had a dealership there for many, many years. Laramie native, all that kind of stuff. So he, he is fully invested and is going to do what's right for the university and to make sure um, that this continues and that they're, they are playing at the highest level possible and they are in the Mountain West Conference. Um, last thing here kind of of interest, obviously, Thorburn asked, you know, what is your reaction to these four leaving the Mountain West? Uh, Berman said, well, no doubt disappointed, just like our fan base. We've had, especially with Colorado State, one of the great rivalries in college sports. And to see them leave to go in a different league, I feel disappointment, but I wouldn't say complete shock. I knew this was a possibility. I know I believed, and I think most people in the Mountain West believe, that this may happen. But it would be down the road after Oregon State and Washington State used the full two years of that NCAA had given them to try to figure out a path forward. We believe that they would use that whole time frame to see what happened in the ACC, the Big 12, and then make a move as it relates to the Mountain West. The Mountain West did have conversations with them about reverse merger joining this league. Unfortunately, that was not something they were interested in. So there's that. They are not interested in a reverse merger. Why the hell would they be? Just to keep that Pac-12 name, like we're fooled, like we think, oh, is USC and UCLA still in that league? No. It's now the flagship programs are Oregon State and Washington State, two teams that were left behind because guess why? Their markets are small, and they're great college towns, but they're small markets in the yeah. middle of nowhere. So... You know, here we are. But they don't want San Jose State. They don't want Hawaii. They don't want Wyoming. They don't want Utah State. They don't want New Mexico. So guess what? Band together. Stick together. Air Force. Stick together. Like you said, UTEP. Wyoming's been a, a conference rival with UTEP for a lot of years. 
That one makes a lot of sense, and it was really good at a time. And if it's only one more team, one I'm fine because once again, let's keep that pie, the piece of the pie as large Small. as possible. Yes, yes, absolutely. And Tom Berman has said that to me numerous times. He hated that 16 team whack, and and rightfully so because that's something else that goes through your head. Like, sh- should they talk to the Conference USA and see if they can merge, or can they merge with? You and know, that's when there really wasn't a TV right entity. Back no, there. no, hell no. So there you have it, man. I mean, the bottom line is Wyoming is hoping like hell to keep the Mountain West together, and I think Air Force holds a lot of keys in that. He did not mention that in what I've seen blowing through this so far, but you got to believe that Air Force holds a key here, a big one. And if they stick around, you know, would I say, oh, hell yeah, go get UTEP in New Mexico State? Maybe not three weeks ago, maybe not two days ago. Now, Yes. They're an absolute, they're a natural rival. They're a natural travel. I know they don't do travel partners anymore, but they're natural everything with New Mexico and New Mexico State. And Wyoming had a nice thing going with them too. So you know what? Go get those two. If you can get into Texas, I, I fear though you can't get those teams in Texas because that means they said no to the Pac-12. Yeah. And if that's the case, then you know a few more Mountain West yeah. teams are going to go. And you mentioned it before we came on the air, is UNLV and Nevada a package deal? Nevada puts zero money into their football program. That's why Jay Norvell's at Colorado State right now. And... There, there is a political issue about that. They want to preserve that rivalry, rivalry, but at the same time, they haven't always been in the same league. No, UNLV has been in the Mountain West before Nevada because Nevada was still in the WAC. And well, they've been Division Two. Yeah, been so and, I mean, yeah, I don't. As long as they just keep that game on the schedule and play each other in every sport possible, which yep. they would do. It's going to happen. Yep. UNLV and Air Force are probably the next two that go to the Pac-12 if it happens. Yeah. No doubt. Well, uh, there it is. Uh, you know, you hear it from the horse's mouth. I'm not surprised by any of that. That's what I've been hearing all along. Um, keep the Mountain West together. I like it. I like the idea. Of, do I hate not having Colorado State in the league? Absolutely. But as long as that game's played, which will also help Wyoming with scheduling. As long as that game's played, uh, you know how it goes, Jared. Ten to fifteen to twenty thousand Wyoming fans, depending on how good they are, could show up in Fort Collins at any given minute for that game. Yep. So uh, I'll take that all day of the week. And you know, Colorado State ain't coming up here. It doesn't matter if it, they're in the SEC; they're not coming to Wyoming. So and I hate saying this. Go Buffs. <laughs> go Huskies. Go Ducks. <laughs> Go Shader, I knew I loved you. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you on that. Well, thanks for joining us. Make sure to uh, stay tuned to 7220sports.com. Uh, once this becomes available for print, I will be putting Ryan's Q&A out with Tom Berman. Big thanks to Ryan for that. Um, there it is, folks. So uh, I'll be posting this shortly. Make sure to check out our 7220sports.com kickoff show uh, tomorrow before Wyoming's game against hated BYU. All this crap, and we didn't even talk about BYU. Mm, so maybe mm, we'll maybe BYU we'll, <laughs> mm, mm, BYU. <laughs> maybe we'll touch on the old Cougs on the uh, kickoff show there, Jared. Thanks, folks. They say the hardest part of getting something done is getting started. Well, we did that 30 years ago when California first took on the tobacco industry. Now, smoking is down 60%, lung cancer 42%. A couple of our cities have already ended tobacco sales. A California without big tobacco isn't just possible, it's already happening. See our progress at undo.org.